So a subscriber had challenged me with a great question. He wanted to know if I could only keep five knives out of my entire collection, you know, under $100, which ones would I hold on to and why? Now, I decided to go ahead and take that a step further. So I went ahead and picked out 10 knives under $100 that I would keep. And as usual, the links to buy, the prices, even the coupon codes will all be listed for you down in the description. And if this is your first time here, hey, I'm Jay. Thanks for stopping by. Go ahead and consider subscribing if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point. So I got to go ahead and give a big uh, shout out and a thank you to Mr. Sliver for coming up with this idea. It was one of the most difficult top 10 lists I've ever made. I mean, I had to make some really tough choices here. All right, let's go ahead and get started with Number 10, I've got from Kershaw, that's the link. Now, I'm a big fan of automatic knives, but, you know, I guess there just wasn't one under $100 that I liked enough to put on this list. And, you know, the, the speed safe assist that Kershaw uses, uh, to me anyway, kind of functions like an automatic. I mean, you know, instead of a pushing a button to release the blade, you've got a, uh, you got a flipper tab. Now, at $81... This is like one of the cheapest knives out there with a 20 CV blade. And as you know, it's an M390 equivalent. That's pretty incredible stuff because it's a, it's a tougher steel with excellent edge retention and even corrosion resistance. And, you know, on top of that, this knife is made right here in the good old US of A. Coming in at number nine, this is going to be a Kubi and that's the Atlas. I almost went with the KU 322 in this spot because both knives really do have a lot in common. Now I got them side by side here so I can show you that, well, they, they both have a flipper tab, a thumb hole, a fuller, and even a forward finger choil. Granted, they're both pretty small choils, but they're there. And I got to show you this because even the action on, on both knives is friggin' fantastic. That was the 322, so let's go ahead and do the uh, the Atlas. Oh, man, that's even better. Ultimately, I went and picked the, obviously, the Atlas because, well, there are a couple reasons. It takes up much less, I mean, much less room in the pocket, and I like the, uh, the 14C 28N blade seal. I like it a little bit more than the, uh, than the D2, on the 322. I mean, the Sandvik is going to be a, it's a tougher steel that's going to be less likely to chip or break. And well, maybe this isn't saying much, but it has better corrosion resistance because, well, D2 is not a stainless steel. It does, though, have better, considerably better edge retention. And it even does cost about $30 less than the atlas here coming in at number eight i've got the american lawman from cold steel i really wanted to have like a, a a true like hard use knife on the list you know that could handle like the tougher jobs when needed i mean it it features you know cold steel's triad lock which we all know can uh, like support the weight of a re refrigerator before giving out and you know if if those of you that don't know what the heck i'm talking about just look up those like cold steel strength test videos on youtube uh some of them are they're pretty interesting now this is obviously not gonna be like the best knife to fidget with but i can tell you that once it's broken in the action you know for a backlock really is actually not that bad now even though it does, it's going to take away some of that, uh, that sharpened edge. I really appreciate this, this full size forward finger choil and at, you know, just under a hundred dollars, it really is, you know, it really is a pretty good deal for a knife with S 35 VN blade steel. That is also completely ambidextrous. Number seven, how about the Ferrum Ford Stinger? Okay, now I realize at first, you know, this this knife might look a little overpriced at $81, but you know, there there's a lot going on here 
under the hood. I mean, one of the, the first things that you're going to notice is how ridiculously thin it is. I mean, we're talking like bug out thin at about 0 0.39 inches. Now, Nitro V, Nitro V really is the perfect steel to use on a, like a super thin blade like this. I mean, it's a harder steel with some excellent toughness, so it's not going to chip. Now, other than the, the blade steel and the forward finger choil, there is, there's a few reasons why this knife um, made the list. I mean, it has, you know, it's got the, the multiple opening options using either the flipper or that fuller, which is on both sides. Uh, the action in both directions is great. And especially considering how light, you know, this thinner blade is. Oh, yeah, that thing still drops shut. Sitting at number six is going to be from Boker Plus. That's the bonfire. I really think that this is just one of the most underrated knives currently out there. It's going to be available in either the Micarta or Babinga Wood scales. And interestingly enough, both versions, uh, they both cost exactly the same at about $67. But, you know, I, I sure wouldn't mind if this came out in maybe... I don't know, maybe a different uh, steel, but for now, you know, the D2, hey, works just fine. Now, it sure it sure doesn't seem like it, but it this is a larger knife with a 3.75 inch blade. And I just, I love, I love knives that kind of successfully blend like a classic look with some more modern features. And this knife does that perfectly. I mean, it, it's basically... This is basically a traditional trapper design with a with a front flipper slash top flipper and liner lock with a deep carry pocket clip. Number five, how about a Spyderco? That's the Andela. I seriously thought about putting this uh, Delica 4 in this spot until I went ahead and I looked at I kind of looked at the two knives side by side and I kind of, well, I determined that the Andela, it really isn't that much bigger than the, than the Delica. And I went with it because, well, I like the added extra handle length and the, the slightly thicker blade stock that it has over the delicate now just like that american lawman i showed you a little bit ago this is going to be like one of those harder use type of knives that's you know not really the best for fidgeting but again once it's broken in well i can almost shake it closed but once it is broken in oh yeah you can it's really easy to split to uh, flick open. I know that $92, you know, for like FRN scales and a VG10 uh, steel blade does seem a little bit steep, but you know, with, it has, you know, four position pocket clip and it is, you know, a seriously lightweight design. It is, it's pretty versatile knife that is going to be great for like working inside or out. Number four, this is going to be a Blade HQ exclusive. It's the Kaiser Beg Lighter in 20 CV. Just like the Kershaw length, this is this is a fantastic deal at about $99 for a 20 CV blade. Now, even though this blade is riding on bronze washers, the action is just, look at that, is so good. I mean, you will think that it has a ball bearing pivot. Now I went ahead and picked this because, well, for me anyway, it sort of fills that whole like uh, gents carry category. Now, when, when you buy one of these, it's going to come with these natural G10 scales, but you know, with so many different versions of the, of the bag lighter out there, I just went ahead and like I did a blade trade and put on these micarta scales from another one that, you know, that I already had. And, you know, if you're not crazy about this, uh, the black coated blade, hey, don't worry, because you can also get it with a satin finish. Number three, how about a CRKT? That's the Pilar 3. 
you probably noticed that I really like this knife because it, it always seems to find its way onto like several of my top 10 lists. And, you know, at $57, this really is a well-made budget price stainless steel frame lock with, I mean, it even has that uh, over travel stop for the lock bar, which is, you know, that's seriously something you don't usually see on a knife in this price range. And it has crazy, I mean, crazy good action. And that generously sized forward finger choil, you know, that's going to kind of help even the uh, larger hands to get like a full four finger grip. All right, sitting pretty at number two is going to be from Civivi. It's the Brazen. Yes. Okay. You got me. I'll finally admit it. This is my favorite Civivi. I mean, even without, even without a forward finger choil, which man, I really wish it had the, I mean, just the blade shape, the handle design, and just the overall size are all like right in my wheelhouse. Hey, and the standard version is a great knife too. You know, it, it just doesn't look as classy as uh, this one with the micarta scales and the uh, Damascus blade. Now, I don't know if they're all like this, but the action on mine, it, it is, it's just as good whether you use the, the flipper tab or the thumb studs. I mean, it's just like, it's, it's like perfectly tuned for both. Now I've got about five honorable mentions that I want to show you. And basically these are just a couple knives that came like this close to making the list. And I'll keep it short because I know we got to get to that number one knife. First honorable mention is going to be a Kaiser. This is the Feist in 3V. Next up is going to be a QSP. It's the Hawk. This next one is going to be a Knives Plus exclusive. It's the QSP Penguin in M390. How about a petrified fish? Yeah, this is the PFP 949 Warrior. And the last honorable mention is going to be another petrified fish. It's the Mini Beluga. All right, you ready to see it? My number one knife under $100 that I would keep is going to be a CJRB. That is the Scoria. This is actually the Knife Center exclusive version. And I, I do have the, I have the other two with the black finish, but I just, I think I like this one more, you know, without the coated blade. Now I, I did consider, okay, going with the Feldspar here. Yeah. Another great CJRB knife because I like the, I like the thicker blade stock and the, uh, the thicker handle. But I went ahead and I just stuck with the, uh, with the Scoria for, well, a few reasons. I mean, this has almost everything that I look for in a knife in this price range. I mean, it's got the, the multiple opening options with the flipper or the, the thumb studs, a, a, a wider drop point blade, nested liners, and a, a forward finger choil, a nice forward finger choil, and even a two position pocket clip. And of course, it has that awesome, I mean awesome, fidget action. Now that I've shown you my list, I would love to see yours. So down in the comments, go ahead and put, just list out the knives out of your collection under $100 that you would keep. List as many as you possibly can. Right about now, there's going to be a video up on the screen that I personally picked out for you to go ahead and watch next. And hey, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. I got to run though. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. And I'll see you at the next video. Take care.